I am tired of people defending Summer and hating Tom. And yes, I'm talking to you too, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I think that it's Tom's fault. Uh, I think that if you really pay attention, Tom's not listening to Summer. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not making this video to say that Tom is inherently right in the situation. The truth is, no one is ever really right in a relationship. There are countless video essays out there about the misinterpretation of Summer, how Tom is the real bad guy, but I want to try to see if we could look at things from a different perspective. Yes, it's true that we only get to see Tom's point of view throughout the film. This is a fact that we cannot change, but this does not mean that our view of the relationship as the audience has to be completely biased to favor Tom. There are elements of the film that allow us to form our own opinions on the relationship despite seeing Summer through Tom's rose-colored glasses. You know, it's funny. When you look at someone through rose-colored glasses, all the red flags just look like flags. I really enjoyed Ariana Alexis's commentary about the problem with Summer. I linked her video in the description and I highly recommend you go check it out. But to sum it up, here's the issue with Summer that Ariana outlines. Summer is not as great as Tom perceives her to be. She identifies herself with the things that she loves, like the Smiths and Ringo Starr being her favorite Beatle. But other than that, she's really not that great. The only things that Tom says he loves about her are her physical traits. I love her smile. I love her hair, I love her knees. I love this heart-shaped birthmark she has on her neck. I love the way she sometimes licks her lips before she talks. I love the sound of her laugh. Which isn't necessarily shallow on Tom's part. It feels more of him grasping at straws to figure out what it is he really loves about her, which in reality is just the idea of her. So why does Tom like her so much? Because he wants to be in love. He wants to love life again. His mundane life has led him to misery, and he wants all the things that he sees in movies and hears in his favorite songs. Honestly, I don't think it's so far-fetched to say that that is something that many of us want too. When we're set in this depressing mindset, it can be easy to see the best in anyone to make them fit our needs. As Tom's in the state of mind, he meets Summer, an undeniably gorgeous girl that paired with a great personality would be, well, probably unstoppable. Being the manic pixie dream girl that she is, and I will not elaborate further on that, she knows she has the upper hand when it comes to Tom. She is fully aware of his fondness towards her, and it's pretty obvious how she uses that to her own advantage. Now, given that we don't get to learn much about her inner monologue, we don't really know why she does this, but anything we assume as a possible reason probably isn't with good intentions. But here's where it gets a little more interesting to me, and where my opinion will part ways with many others. People say Tom sets up this idealistic version of Summer in his head, which is true, and that he creates unattainable expectations of her, also true. But that is not his fault. While it's never a good idea to set up expectations for another person, it's human nature. We all do it. And the only thing that can lead us to believe that those expectations will be fulfilled are actions and words. Let's take a look at an example. Do you like me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course I like you. As friends? Right, as friends. Just as friends? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, I hadn't really thought about, um, yes. Why? No reason, I just... I think you're interesting, and I'd like for us to be friends. To me, this is one of the most important scenes in the film. This was following their conversation about their theories on love, where Tom shares with Summer his belief in true love, while Summer refutes him with saying that true love does not exist. Despite Summer hearing his passionate opinion, she decides to go after him. Who's to say that Tom would have pursued her following that conversation had she not initiated a flirty nature with him? Not only that, but Summer also initiates the first kiss. Again. Who's to say that Tom would have ever kissed her following that night at the karaoke bar, had she not kissed him first? The more I watch the film, the more I feel for Tom and become more and more convinced that Summer just doesn't really care for other people's feelings. Sure, you could argue that Tom could have seen all the red flags and should have ended the relationship sooner, but when was the last time that you recognized red flags while you were in the honeymoon phase of a relationship, or even a friendship for that matter? It's hard to recognize these things while we're in them, and it's easy for us as the audience to scream at Tom for not seeing it, but this is what makes this movie one of the most realistic portrayals of love. When you look at someone through those rose-colored glasses, and they show you even a glimmer of love and hope, you will always see past their faults. This is the unfortunate nature of heartbreak for many people, Tom being one of them. 
I love this movie for giving insight into the mind of the hopeless romantic and how it's not necessarily their fault when things like this happen. Tom was always honest with the way he felt about Summer. She's just as at fault for not ending the relationship as he was. Although I don't think that it would happen, it would be great to see a similar movie from Summer's perspective. I don't think she's necessarily evil. She clearly had some other things going on considering she ended up getting married after all of her preaching about being single. It's a shame that Tom had to get dragged into whatever Summer was thinking about, but however heartbreaking the experience was, it's an experience that will make his next relationship so much stronger. Thank you guys so much for watching. It really means a lot. If you have any more ideas of movies I should cover, please let me know in the comments and I'd be more than happy to make a video about it. Thanks and I'll see you next time.